Welcome to Standing Ground Media. This is my Flat Earth testimony. I grew up much like most people in my generation. I think that anyone over the age of 40 would say the same thing. We spent most of our time outside. Girls did girl things, while us boys, we spent our time riding bikes and skateboards, acquiring uncountable scabs on our elbows and knees. We'd play kick the can, tag, or pretended a simple stick was a gun for our epic battles throughout the whole neighborhood, fearless of whose backyard we may have ran through or hid in. We used to explore the local woods, building forts, getting lost, catching bugs or snakes, or we'd play home run derby with wiffle balls half taped to maximize both throwing velocity and curve along with our distance to our epic of blasts off a bat made from a broom handle or a 50 cent plastic bat reinforced with duct tape. I spent nearly every other weekend or so waking up at 4 a.m. at my grandparents' house to hurry off to the harbor for our epic fishing adventures. We'd often travel over an hour speeding through the San Juan Islands to our secret spots to satisfy both grandpas and my addiction to catching the next salmon or lingcod or filling our cooler with rockfish or crab. I was a paper boy. I was a boy scout. And I was a good student. Not that I came home and labored over the commitment to memory process through hours of repetition. No. I was too busy playing outside. I was a good student only because I didn't need to work hard at it. Sure, if there was a research project or an essay, yeah. I had to work at it because there was no way around that if you wanted to get the grades. But when it came to the learning of quote-unquote factoids and regurgitating them at test time, I was good at that naturally. I don't think I'm unusual in that I didn't enjoy school, but I was, like everyone else, conditioned from the early ages of kindergarten that school was what kids had to do. So, if I was going to enjoy my childhood, I would do what I needed to, to appease both parents and teachers by learning the material. I remember clearly, clearly, learning about Christopher Columbus having to persuade his detractors that he wouldn't fall off of an edge of a flat earth in his voyage to the west across the Atlantic. I remember how silly the idea was made that people thought the world was flat. Because after all, you can watch a ship go over the horizon, which of course was only possible if the earth was just like that globe perched inside each classroom I ever sat in, whether it was English, math, or science. But I didn't question this at all. I wasn't taught to question it. In fact, because of the absurdity introduced from the teaching about Christopher Columbus being such a primitive and laughable thing, why would I? I mean, come on, we landed on the moon before I was even born. So, I was taught from a baby that the globe is a fact from storybooks, cartoons, NASA, spinning globes in class, movies, and history lessons. I was taught the idea of a flat earth was to be ridiculed, not looked at. I mean, my entire school life was completely void of any idea that there were people, scientists no less, that still took a flat earth and accompanying cosmology seriously. It just wasn't taught. Only the globe and the silliness of our ancestors because a ship appears to go over the horizon. 
I went on to embrace the sciences indoctrinated into me through my early years. With each passing year, there was a new shuttle launch or a new epic space-based sci-fi adventure. Always a new crisp info dump about infinite universe and a big bang of exponentially and forever expanding energy and matter over billions of years would pop up on Discovery or Science channels. Or geologists and anthropologists hammering vast distances of time down the public's throat with each new documentary. I was always unaware that I was being told what to think instead of how to think for myself. Then something huge happened that shook the foundations of everyone's psyche. September 11th, 2001. I quickly turned from someone that took nearly everything science and the media presented to me as fact to someone that stepped back a bit. I began to have questions. I found the rabbit hole. Each question led to another. Each revelation brought a new question. I was not raised religiously, but suddenly I had a thirst for spiritual tendencies that were coming into me. I dreamt more, and vividly. Even though I wasn't raised religiously as a child, I always found myself talking to God when I was alone. And now, I was doing it again as an adult but with bigger concerns and questions. Knowing certain people from work relig were religious, I would question them until one graciously handed me a Bible. I couldn't put it down. I carried it in my work bag and back home each day, reading it every chance I had. I read it cover to cover twice through while taking time to study favorite parts. I was baptized two years later in November of 2003. But science was not done with me yet. Even though the atrocities happening throughout the world and on that horrific September day had me convinced that the devil was surely not only real, but running loose in our world, the subtle tug of science persisted, as well as other finely crafted lies that became popularized. I believed in God, but science and the Bible didn't coexist well with me. The clash wore on me. The media openly talked about aliens more often, sometimes using well-known physicists or other well-known faces to open up the public about life being likely outside of Earth. Ancient aliens came out eventually and I had every episode recorded. If space was so infinite and evolving, then Drake's equation must be accurate when showing that intelligent life exists. So of course we're being visited, and of course our governments knew about it. In fact, they were in on it, right? Right? Between 2003, when I was baptized and fell away, through 2017, I researched nearly every conceivable modern conspiracy. Fiat fractional reserve banking, central banking, the New World Order, Freemasonry, fake moon missions, JFK, 9-11, false flags, Operation Monarch, aliens, Bigfoot, hollow earth, and more. But never had I come across Flat Earth. Then, in the beginning of August 2017, my family and I came home from a long fishing trip. While my fiancé was out running her errands, I stumbled upon my first Flat Earth video on YouTube. I remember just dis distinctly thinking, what in the world is with this? But I watched. Then another, and another, until I heard her coming through the front door. Like a kid who was about to get caught, I quickly turned the TV to a news channel. She couldn't see me watching that. She'll think you're crazy. Looking back on that moment, 
It is interesting how that programming kicked in from childhood. But from that day on, I questioned things all over again. I'd been boating the Puget Sound here in Washington State since a little boy. From the time I learned the world was a globe till now, I never questioned it. Well, August around here is prime boating season, so I forced the fiancé out on the water with me several times a week. I looked hard, I mean hard, at my horizons each time I went, and I learned that if the Earth was a globe, it has got to be way bigger than what the books say, because I detect no curvature here. Or... What if I, we, have been brainwashed from birth to believe a bunch of lies about our world? What if the earth is flat? What if nothing didn't explode into everything, expanding since never into always, forming stars and galaxies and planets which, by a chance closely resembling zero, gave forth life of which nothing is responsible. What if there is a firmament above keeping us from space? So then the moon missions were faked? There aren't robots on Mars? You mean they've been lying to us? But why? What if... All those conflicts I had with the Bible in silence slowly tugging me away from my close relationship with the Creator through Scripture was a lie. Did I let Satan beat me through a faith in science over the Word of God? What if I embrace this as truth? What will everyone think of me? Will they laugh? Of course they'll laugh. Is this really worth all the negative things that will happen because of it? What if I just forget I even saw all this stuff and go back to the easy side of the fence? But I can't do that. I can't unsee this. I can't unknow it. And I can't stop thinking about it each time I go outside and look around. What if? What if I begin standing my ground? If I pray God forgives me for being carried to and fro by the system of things the enemy has created as a snare for all creation, and I fight back by standing ground, by believing in God and His Word? What if I take everything God says as truth and stop questioning it, knowing that God cannot tell a lie? What if I put my faith in God, who is perfect, instead of the wisdom of men? What if? What if this is your first time hearing about Flat Earth? Will you investigate it? Or will you condemn it before knowing anything about it? Will you show courage by looking at something that might get you laughed at? What if? What if this testimony helped bring you to God? I pray that it does. The flat earth didn't save me, but it did bring me back to the only one who can. I live in a unique place that is perfect for flat earth investigation. This video was my testimony, or coming out party if you will. In the coming days, weeks, and months, 
I will be using the unique surroundings I am blessed to live near that are perfect for showing the facts about our plane. I live just a few minutes from the salt water full of islands, 10, 20, and 30 plus mile distances over straight shots of water. On a calm day with good visibility, it is clear that there is no curvature. I am also blessed to have the Cascade Mountains in our figurative backyard, painting our eastern horizon each day. The combination of mountains, water, and often a great visibility lends me great opportunities to document incredible things for the Flat Earth community. And I intend to do this as best I can as time permits. So whether you're new to Flat Earth or a veteran, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and check in on my videos as they come out. Thank you for tuning in.